Hey, yo, what's up, what's up, guys? Zaid here with another episode of Saints Experience. So today's the day. It's finally been 30 days since I started this fasting carnivore diet. And today I'm finally going to share the results that I've gotten after 30 days of fasting and doing carnivore and doing a little bit of experimenting here and there. So come with me and let's check these results out. So before we start this video guys, I just want to let you know that all this was done without doing any exercise of any type. No push-ups, no pull-ups, no nothing, no running, no nothing, zero gym work, zero nothing. Right now at the moment, as you guys know, if you've been watching the channel for any given amount of time, I have two shoulder injuries, I have a hip injury and a knee injury, and so I can't do any of that. And obviously these results would have been a lot more different, there would have been a little bit more drastic if I had done some exercising. But for all the entirety of this 30 day challenge, no exercise was done. So with that out of the way, let's get into the nitty gritty of how all this got done. It's been 30 days since I started this fasting carnivore diet and there's been a lot of things that I found along the way it's honestly it's been a ride to say the least there was a lot of things that I found out in the first couple of days that I had to readjust and then half point was also a little strugglish and at the end I kind of had everything a little bit more fine-tuned but that doesn't mean it was easy in any way so let's start off at the beginning if you guys have been watching this channel for like the past 30 days you guys know what's been kind of going around if you haven't here's a little bit of a rundown for the first week that I started doing this fasting challenge I started doing 24 hours so what does that mean I was fasting for 24 hours and I would eat in a very small window and then I wouldn't eat anything again until the next 24 hours so my first week I saw some great results with this I think I lost a total of almost like 10 pounds. I start off at 197, 196, and it could easily go up to 198, no problem. And this was with a carnivore diet already implemented before this. So I really didn't change much at all. And so those 10 pounds that I really just lost for the first week, I think were just a lot of water weight and some fat. So I was super happy with those results. I mean, who doesn't want to get 10 pounds off of body weight whatever it is if it's water or fat off of them so some really good results on the second week I started to realize halfway through the week that I wasn't losing much weight at all I was still doing the 24-hour fast as I mentioned I was doing it all carnivore in general but I I cook everything you know I was eating some tri-tip I was eating some eggs I was eating some fish depending on what whatever the day was or whatever I had for that day. So I started to see that the scale was now showing that I was losing about half a pound a day. So the weight loss started to go really, really slowly. Yeah, for that week, I think I lost about like three, four pounds at most, something like that. I went, I got to like around 183, 182. I was hovering around that general area. And then on my third week, I decided to start prolonging my fast a little bit more. So what I started doing was 48 hour fasts. So what I would do is I wouldn't eat for 48 hours, get some food in me, and then not eat again for the next 48 hours. So the first time I tried that, which was a couple of months ago, it didn't go so well for me. I tried doing it, but I felt that my kidneys or something back here was actually starting to hurt me and I decided to just kind of cave on it at like the 40th hour. I hadn't tried one since, but since I got used to fasting now for the past like two weeks, I figured it'd be a little bit easier. And it was, I went through the 48 hours, no problem. However, something that I did find was that the longer that I fast, uh, that makes me very angry. Like the easier it is to get me in a bad mood, the easier it is to just get me like a little pissed off. I was finding that I was having a lot of mood problems, you know, I was getting really angry, really cranky really quickly. I was super volatile and my girlfriend started noticing it as well and she told me, hey, um, are you okay? Is this fasting, is it really helping you out? Or Cause your mood sucks right now, man, and you really gotta put a check on it. And so I started looking into it a little bit more it's a normal thing of fasting to be a little bit more volatile, a little bit more angry, but there's definitely ways of helping it. One thing that I started doing was 
consuming a lot more potassium, magnesium, and sodium. And that definitely started to help out with the whole mood swings and everything. And it got me to a level where I was chilling a lot more. Uh, but in no way, shape, or form did it make it easier. Fasting is not a simple thing. So for that entire third week, I managed to get my weight down to like 178. So there was quite a bit of progress done when I was fasting for 48 hours. And then during that same week, I decided to try a three day fast. So no food for 72 hours. And that helped out with these results as well. That's why I was able to get down from that 183 to like that 178. And as I mentioned, it wasn't easy. There was a lot of mental toughness, but luckily there wasn't any back pain like the first time or anything like that. Nothing of that sort. So got through that week, got down to 178, got the results in, super awesome. And finally, this was the fourth week. So I realized on that third week, obviously, that the weight wasn't coming off unless I was doing a 48 hour fast or a 72 hour fast. So this week I did a little bit of a combination of a 42 hour fast with a 72 hour fast and then a 42 hour fast again. That got me some pretty good results. And something else that I added into the mix was going into the sauna. I started going into the sauna this week just to help drain my body of any excess water, get a little bit more sweat going, you know, just get the blood flow moving a lot more. So every day I was going into the sauna for about 20 minutes and the sauna was at 194 degrees Fahrenheit. So it was pretty hot, but I managed to stick in there for 20 minutes every day. So another thing that I found out with these four weeks was what works for me. And by that, I mean, how many days do I have to fast in order for me to lose weight, to gain weight, muscle, or whatever it is. And unfortunately, as you guys know, I can't do any exercises right now due to my shoulder injuries and my hip injuries. And I know I sound like a broken record talking about these, but I can't do it right now. So all this got done stationary. I didn't do any exercise or anything. Uh, on a couple of days, I did go out and prolonged walks but I didn't see a big, big, big improvements in weight on those days. I really have to start putting exercise back into the mix once I get better, and that's when I'll really see what kind of works for me when I'm in an exercise kind of scenario. But as of right now, without doing any exercise, like being super sedentary and just whatever I do at work, I figured out that a 24 hour fast, which is basically one meal a day, keeps me at the weight that I'm at. So if I was at 183 pounds still, so if I was at 183 pounds, that will keep me in 183 pounds for the next day. It'll just kind of maintain my weight. So that's a good thing for maintenance. So that's something that's definitely doable for a prolonged period of time, just having one meal a day. Again, I'll have that meal with my girlfriend when she comes over from work. And that's definitely something that's doable for a very prolonged period of time in my case. The next one, 48 hours. When I started to do 48 hours, I started noticing that I would lose uh, half a pound or a pound, depending on the day, depending on the movement. So that will take off a little bit of fat or a little bit of water. And that's a, I think a pretty doable way as well. It's pretty stable to do 48 hours, maybe not eating today and then eating tomorrow, not eating today, not eating tomorrow, especially if you're on a super hectic, busy schedule, that's one way to do it. And I think I might be using that template quite a bit. And lastly, the 72 hours, 72 hours was rough but 72 hours was the one thing that actually did start to yield quite a bit of results. And it was an average of three to four pounds that I was losing whenever I was doing a 72 hour fast. So that was really, really helping out. My thoughts on that were that from the 40th hour to about the 72nd hour, that's when my body really, really started to go into ketosis. It really got all the carbs out of the way, all the glycogen stores got depleted and everything. And even though I was doing a carnivore diet, I was eating quite a bit of meat. And one of the functions of our liver is to create glycogen. So that's where I'm talking about when I say carbs. My glycogen stores were still full at 48 hours, but then after that, you know, my body was definitely kicked into ketosis or something. And that's when I think I started to really, really lose body fat. 
So that's why I think the discrepancy with going for 48 hours and losing one pound and then going for 72 hours and just losing like three extra pounds, you know? So definitely some super interesting findings, just tweaking and messing around with the hours and the, the days that I was fasting and not. And I'm happy to say that after four weeks of trying out different things with fasting, trying out um, what works for me, what doesn't work for me, these are the final results. What do you think guys? I think that for four weeks there are some pretty decent results. I mean I've never been at this weight ever since since I, I no actually ever I don't think I've ever been at this weight. I think I might have gone through it at one point through puberty or something like that um, but I, I can tell you guys that I went through it real quick but I've never been at this weight at, and felt so stable or felt that I had such control of my nutrition. As I've told you guys, I, I've tried everything. I've tried a vegetarian diet, I've tried the whole six to seven meals a day, I've tried low carb, high carb, seven miles a day running, doing CrossFit, you name it guys, I've, I've tried it. I really have tried it, all or most of it, you know? Obviously not all, there's probably some guy that's gonna come out. Have you tried the bamboo diet? You know, you just eat bamboo all day. You lose weight, man. But you guys know what I mean. Like the more mainstream diets, I've tried them. I've tried them, and they just haven't been able to help as much as this has. And so, it's been it's been pretty surreal to lose that amount of weight in one month, which is something that I've been struggling for like the past at least 12, 15 years that I just haven't been able to lose. So, one month in comparison to 12, 15 years of my life. Not that that hasn't shown me anything, not that I haven't learned anything from those 10, 15 years, but I definitely appreciate losing this amount of weight in this little of a time. And like I said, by no means was this easy. As I mentioned, there are a couple of things that come with doing this fasting. It's, it's really tough on the brain. I know a lot of people say, you'll get used to the fasting, you'll get used to doing this. I don't think I've gotten used to it, but the one thing that I have gotten used to is dealing with my mood. That snake juice or that mixture of potassium, magnesium, and sodium, that's what it's called, apparently it's called snake juice, or that's what the people like to call it, you know? But that mixture of ingredients has really helped me control these mood swings, you know? It has really kept everything just in a, in a better spot. And if you are going into this fasting world, you know, you're trying out three days, I know people do seven days, 30 days, um, that's insane and props to you guys. Just know and be aware that your mood might be super volatile. You should be fine with it. It's not something that's super uncontrollable, but it definitely is a thing if you guys are gonna try this out. Second, if you have a spouse, um, this might bring some conflict with my girlfriend. Not that she, not that it brought any like major conflict or anything like that, but with my girlfriend, obviously our one time when we're together in the day is when we're eating and I always cook for her so she was a little disappointed she said hey you're not gonna eat with me you know and it might sound dumb for some people like oh you can like you can't figure it out for one day or something like that no it's not about that you know this is like our time this is a time that we when we sit down and this is let's talk about things kind of time you know it's, I, I figure it's really really important I really appreciate that time with her and so if you guys have anything similar to that make sure you explain to the other person what you're doing make sure you kind of put it on the table hey you know this is what I'm gonna be doing and for the next couple of weeks or maybe you know for a very prolonged period of time 
uh, this is how it's gonna be and just make sure that you guys are both on board with it and that way that way there's good communication and yeah that solved that problem out so make sure if you have a spouse make sure you let them know what you're going through that, that you're gonna be a little bit volatile that you're gonna be you know not having dinner with them and you guys should just be fine and third cognitive function depending on how long you're fasting might actually go down the longer I fasted and it wasn't like like longer for like 72 hours or 40 hours, whatever it may, may have been, no. It's the longer the consistent fasting. So let's say the third weekend, I started to realize that my cognitive function really started going down. Maybe I was super, super depleted. Maybe I needed something else, but I really started noticing my mental function just really going down. So. So I'm gonna try to dive a little bit more into that in another video. I'm gonna be doing a little bit more research because I'm pretty sure there's some people that have found a way to kind of hack this because it has slowed me a little bit down up here and I kind of don't like that. So I'll check in with you guys a little bit more. So that's kind of like the third downside. The longer you fast, the more you feel like your mental cognitive function starts to get depleted. But other than that, I mean, the results are pretty obvious, guys. I've lost quite a bit of fat. The other benefits that I got along with this as well was um, I started noticing that my skin got even better. It got even smoother. I noticed that everything just started to get a little bit shinier. There was a lot of toxins burned out, especially this last week with the sauna. It was very, very surreal I, when I started like noticing everything, my skin and all of it. It was, it was pretty rad, so that was another benefit. Obviously the stuff that's going underneath, all the cell autophagy that's happening, you know, the metabolism kind of resetting itself, all those other extra benefits of fasting as well. Those I think are just as important, if not more important than the actual fat loss. I just think that the fat loss happening at this time is just a little bit almost of a bonus in comparison to all the other things that fasting brings to the table. There, it, it also brings a lot of mental toughness, even though this sounds kind of dumb, Fasting for 24 hours is fine. 48 hours, it gets a little harder. 72 hours for me was really, really hard because I have a lot of food here in the house and I always want to cook something. I, I have this relationship with food where even though I wasn't eating with my girlfriend, I was cooking for her. So for me, it was really tough to see the food at one point and not be able to eat it. I cooked her some tri-tip on the weekend and it got to me when I was doing, I was like around my fifth, 50th hour and it got to me and I was like, oh, I, I really wanna have this right now. I really, really wanna have this right now. But I said, you know what? I, I gotta get these last pounds off of me right now. I, I gotta finish this 72 hour fast. I gotta do it. And like I said, it, it brought, it brings a mental toughness to the table that you kind of know you have but it's not until you put it into play that you realize, okay, I got this, I can survive on a 72 hour fast, no problem. Trust me, I've been through worse, that kind of thing. So I think that's a hardship that people, I really, I don't, I wouldn't say that everybody has to go through, but if you go through it, you understand it, and it makes you that much more tougher, that much more resilient to a hard position, a tough moment in your life. And yeah, I really think, that there's a lot of benefits to it. Also, it makes you realize how pampered we are. We have food all the time now. And I'm pretty sure during the times of like hunter gatherers or even just a couple of hundred years ago, I mean, there weren't any refrigerators available. People would have to go get their food every day. And you know, sometimes, not, a, not every day, sometimes every other day. Sometimes this was just the lifestyle. Sometimes if they were the guys were out at sea and they ran out of food or something like that, they would go for days without food, you know? So it makes you realize what those people went through and what the human body is capable of. It really is capable of a lot of amazing things. You don't need food if you have enough fat reserves in your body, you know, like you can go for many, many days. And even without water, there's a lot of people that do fasting there's a lot of people that do fasting for a very prolonged amount of time and there's a lot of people that do water fasting and that's some other level but it definitely yields good results and again it all comes back to the same thing it's just amazing what the human body is capable of if you just let it do its thing so my final thoughts on all this just to kind of wrap everything up is i think fasting is great 
I know a lot of people say for cognitive function and stuff like that. Yeah, sure. The first couple of days I noticed that it worked for me cognitively, but if you're doing it for a very prolonged amount of time, two, three, four weeks, one month or something like that, it might actually bring those levels down. That's what I noticed. That's my personal experience. Don't, don't take it as a, ooh, yeah, you're gonna go down. You're gonna shut off. You're gonna need to reboot. That's just what happened to me. For cognitive function, first couple of days. If you want to lose some fat, this is a pretty good way. And I'm no doctor, I'm not recommending anything, but this is something that really worked for me. And like I said, I've tried many, 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 many diets out, ways of living. And I have to say that this was the simplest approach that made a lot of sense why it was working and that didn't feel 